Do any of you know how I can be happier? I mean, really, how can I be happier? This is a, a perennial occupation for many people. This, this almost universal longing for, for a more rosy, positive, psychological future. How can I be happier? It is, without a doubt, the single question I hear more often than any other. I hear it from people from all walks of life, people who represent literally every age range, gender, social, economic, or cultural background. They all have the same basic question. They want to know about how to, to improve their emotional lot in life. And people who are interested in becoming happier, they share one thing in common. They all operate on the simple assumption that it is possible to do so. That is, they think that if, if only they can make a change, a change right here and now, it will yield happiness dividends in the future. They believe, in particular, that if they can make a change in the present moment, a change to their attitudes or thinking, a change to their habits or behaviors, or, or a change to their circumstances or relationships, it certainly will pay off with future happiness. The problem with that is that the future, by its very nature, by its definition, is unpredictable and a highly unreliable source of happiness. The future will offer us both pleasant and unpleasant moments. It'll offer us happiness and sadness, both. No matter what changes you make or what plans you execute, a far more certain source of happiness for you is to be found in your past. Up until today, your happiest days are behind you. I guarantee you. For you can, with nearly 100% accuracy, look to earlier times and identify those moments that were the most pleasant, the most positive, the happiest. And using a, a mental technique that is no more complicated or foreign than simply remembering, you can actually drag those experiences from the past into the present, and you can experience them right here and now with the same emotional resonance, the same actual joy that you did earlier in life. I am going to offer one of my own memories to you to illustrate this point. A few years ago, I was in... Uh, Calcutta, India, and I was doing what I do. I, I was conducting interviews about happiness, only I was doing it in an illegal slum settlement, a, a really a deplorable living place. Um, it was a, a ramshackle collection of, of thatch and bamboo huts in which whole families of sometimes five, six, seven people would crowd together, often in a, in a single room. The interiors of, of many of these shacks were lined with old yellowing newspapers, and often they were blackened with the unventilated fumes of, of propane stoves that are used for cooking the day's meager meals. And these families, when they're lucky enough to find work, it was almost always as day laborers, as domestic servants or rickshaw pullers, and they subsisted on, on merely a dollar or two a day. The, the slum itself abutted a, a stagnant pond that was just teeming with garbage. And the residents there were under constant threat of eviction from developers angling for their land occasional uh, abuses by, by police officers demanding bribes. And on one particular day, I interviewed a 10-year-old girl named Putal, darling, darling little girl. And I said, Putal, what would you like to be when you grow up? And she said, a nurse. And I knew without asking 
exactly why Putal wanted to be a nurse. She had seen the nurses walk to, to the nearby hospital in their crisp white, you know, very traditional nurses' uniforms. And I am certain that those uniforms represented everything that was, was professionally successful, that was clean. I'm positive that on a daily basis, Putal looked at these nurses with, with some degree of both admiration and envy. And so I followed up. I said, Putal, what, what personal qualities or, or strengths do you have that you think would make you particularly a good nurse? She gave me a, a very sweet sort of childlike answer. She said, I'm fast. As if somehow maybe taking vital signs really quickly would be a good for a nurse to do. And I'm a, a somewhat competitive person and I like to tease children. And so I said, Putal, do you think you're faster than I am? And her face completely changed. It became so serious. And some kind of light of confidence turned on in front of her in a way that I didn't even know was possible for a child. She just said, I am definitely faster than you. <laughs> and not to let a challenge go unanswered, I said, Putal, then let's race. And again, with that same seriousness, she said, you're on. <laughs> and so Putal and I ventured from her small slum settlement home out to the, to the major commercial thoroughfare, a huge multi-lane street teeming with businesses and pedestrians. But it was not just Putal and I. Her parents, of course, came, but the parents told their neighbors, and those neighbors, in turn, <laughs> told their neighbors. And by the time we arrived on the street, there were hundreds of spectators. If I would have known, I probably would not have challenged this kid to a race. There were people who owned tea stalls that were shuttering their businesses. Taxi cabs, some of them with fares in the back, were pulling off to the side of the road. The people in the back were saying, what are we doing? Why are we pulling over? Oh, there's going to be a race. Well, then that's just fine. <laughs> it was as if South Calcutta had shut down for the day to watch this impromptu athletic competition. And I felt terrible because how was I going to beat the small impoverished child in front of everyone? <laughs> So I had a strategy. I would instead run a little bit slow. You know how it is when you challenge a child. You, you give them a good race, but then you let them win at the end. So Putal and I squared off against one another. My translator kind of drew a, a starting line for us and designated a finish line. And there we were. I heard, on your mark, Get set, go. And on that word go, I looked to my left and just as you might in a child's animated cartoon, all I saw was a puff of smoke <laughs> where Putal used to be. <sighs> this kid was fast. I mean, really fast. It was not her self-esteem I was worried about. <laughs> so I was running as fast as I could. I mean, I was pouring it on because I wanted to still be in the race. <laughs> and there we were, just running abreast of one another, just getting closer and closer to our designated finish line. And as we drew nearer, again, I glanced to my left to to check to see where Putal was. And we had this, this moment where she looked at me. She raised an eyebrow and gave me a little nod. And it was in that moment, that moment that I would consider, even to this day, the worst realization of my entire life. <laughs> it was in that moment that I realized that Putal had been running slowly. <laughs> And as my jaw dropped open in disbelief with the realization, 
There was just another puff. <laughs> and Putal, digging deep into some unknown reserve of energy, shot forward, hit the designated finish line, and immediately took a victory lap. Who taught this kid how to do a victory lap? She had both arms raised, and she passed me. I wasn't even done with the race yet. She passed me going the other way, cheering for herself. And she ran over, and she grabbed her parents and just hugged them, and this kid was beaming. And her parents were so happy, you should have seen the smiles on their faces. And her entire neighborhood erupted into a unified cheer over this hard-won but small and precious moment, this, this tiny moment of joy in an otherwise bleak life. And I will tell you, with all honesty, that here, on this stage, right this second, as I tell this to you, I experienced the exact same happiness that I felt years ago on the other side of the world. And so powerful are positive memories that when shared, my guess is they're somewhat contagious. I see many small smiles on your faces and I'm guessing that even though you weren't there and didn't have anything to do with this memory, you also feel an uptick in your own happiness. That's how rewarding and how potent positive reminiscence, the ability to remember the good times from before is. And yet, we are left with a final thorny issue. And that's what to do about the future. Do I think that we should only be nostalgic? Should you give up trying to be successful? Should you quit hoping for pleasantness down the road? Of course not. Of course you should seek out a better life and, and work as effortly as possible for it. And when life does indeed reward you with an occasional pleasant moment, you should take it and enjoy it, but not because you believe that the future is where your happiness lives, but because that moment, by its very nature, will recede into the present and then slip into the past where it will become part of your stable of memories, part of this, this deep, vast resource for you to pull up again and again to experience more happiness in the present. And those memories, those will be the answer to the question, how can I be happier? Thank you. <laughs>